uh, 8,000 BC. These are uh, 4,800, and you can see the kind of uh, marks that were left by the rope that was hemp. So, well, let's see. So here you see it was part of agriculture. It was probably the earliest cultivated plant, they think. Now, it's, it's not surprising because there's probably more than one grower here tonight uh, who, can, who can talk about the special relationship that human beings can have with plants and always have because we're all creatures that are creatures of the light. We live by the light of the sun and it's only by the green gift of that chlorophyll that runs through those mighty green leaves that has evolved along with us you know the Shinto religion has uh, cannabis in uh, kind of incense uh, and so it, there's multiple ways of getting high can you imagine the first discovery of it oh there's this stuff it's growing all around here let's now what we have to keep the fire going. Just throw it on here, on the fire, in the caves, you know? It's like, hey, did you see the bison running across the cave? I see them right there on the wall. Don't you see? It's flickering. They're like moving on the wall. Yeah. So it was all over the world, actually. The psychedelic sacramental culture is the old time religion. That's what we find out. All right. So, I love some of these old pictures of the uh, cannabis plants. And it shows you the venerable old tradition, the kind of lost tradition that we have all over the world of uh, cannabis. And how important it was in the Shinto religion uh, it, it was cultivated for oh so many reasons, in, including sacramental offerings, which are like, look at this huge uh, offering of the rope, you know? Looks like a huge doobie, doesn't it? <laughs> doobie of the gods! <laughs> yeah. This is Seshet. She was the consort of Thoth. The magician and she is always portrayed with the cannabis leaf sticking straight out of the top of her head no headdress ever just that cannabis leaf coming out of the top of her head and um, I don't know what that dome thing is over the cannabis leaf with a little nipple on it but it looks a lot like a breast with a nipple on it and um, they say that, I mean, I mean, it is written in, in hieroglyphics that Seshet uh, says, it says, Seshet will open the doors of heaven for you. But also, uh, that, that she was the originator of writing, which is interesting to me because of secret writing. So she, you know, took in the secret writing, she also wrote the things that Thoth said, the magician. She followed after him and wrote down the stuff. So there she is again with the leaf and, and that dome, that breast pointing straight up to the sky. She opens the doors of heaven for you. And uh, I don't know, what the, what, what's this supposed to be about? It's this? about the Ebers papyrus, um, which was basically a medical papyrus and it described some of the medical uses of cannabis which uh, the federal government still has uh, difficulty locating, um, but they could look back uh, a few thousand years and find it. Okay, there we go. Uh, so going over to, um, let's see, India, I guess uh, a few thousand years ago, about 3,500 years ago, we have evidence of uh, Soma, in India, here. Now, soma was a plant that allowed people to become in contact with the land of the gods. And so, 
We don't really know what Soma was. Uh, Steve Hager thinks it was cannabis, though. And we know that, uh, that it was part of the earliest religious text, which was the Rig Veda, back, uh, mm, God, at least uh, 3,500, uh, uh, th yeah, 3,500 years ago. All right, so you have the ganja smoking babas, and uh, they come out of the uh, mountains uh, for the Kumbh Mela at the world's largest uh, festival held on Earth. And you can see the, uh, uh, the Ganges is flowing out of the top knot of Shiva, and uh, the Ganges, what would grow around the Ganges, but ganja. So here they come out for the Kumbh Mela, so these are the ganja smoking babas, and uh, millions come out and celebrate together. Wow. So it's the largest festival on earth, and uh, can probably oldest continuously running psychedelic religion on earth, Hinduism. All right. Okay. Trying to advance this forward. There we go. Oh, America and uh, Europe. Okay, Hildegard van Bingen, she was a visionary abbess, and she used to use cannabis as well. Maybe for some of her visions, I wonder. <laughs> so, and early botanical illustrations of cannabis. You know, do be or not do be? They say that William uh, Shakespeare uh, they found some cannabis residue in his pipe. <laughs> yeah. On him, paper. Yeah. All right. The primary crop of Washington, cannabis, 1797. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Hey, you know how we have cannabis out today with the flower, with the, um, the concentrate, and then the edibles? It's thanks to the Sultan of Turkey. In 1876, he brought all those things to the Turkish pavilion of the centennial, the 100th birthday of the Americas. And so within, you know, like, uh, a short time they had Turkish smoking parlors all over the uh, Northeast and they were all smoking cannabis and having a great time. And uh, so the whole kind of style moved in at this uh, uh, turn of the century there. And uh, it was really beautiful. It looks like a few hippie pads I wish I'd been in. And so, and they used to have the oil and the extracts and all the cannabis medicines. And uh, the, the doctors begged them not to make it illegal. And uh, they used to have cannabis candy. And um, so it was really just, it, you know, the jazz musicians probably was at the foundation of jazz, you know, really, because there was a main entry point in New Orleans. And uh, so, and all the jazz performers would talk about uh, how important um, marijuana has been to them. So it's been an important part of the of musical development all over. You know, the creative spirit has been fueled by cannabis. We can thank a lot of these amazing artists, you know, for showing the, uh, you know, showing what cannabis can do to uplift the human spirit. You know. Siri Love <laughs> represented on 420. That's right. All right, I'm trying to. <laughs> All right, Willie. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, I wanted to uh, give a shout out to High Times. Uh, they gave me this opportunity to uh, do the uh, cup. And Allison's language, you can see there, is at the top of the cup. So what I, what I want to tell you about the language, the secret writing that I've been working with for over 40 years, ever since I met Alex, and he recognized the secret writing in my art. And what it is is that before I knew Alex, when I was about 20, 
I had been uh, taking LSD and mescaline and psilocybin and those kinds of things for already, you know, uh, since I was 17. But, but when I was 20, I read this book by Ram Dass, Be Here Now. And uh, in the book, in the introduction, he talks about seeing the white light and how if you would go into a dark room and go inside, maybe some spiritual or soft music uh, would encourage you to have an, have an experience of the divine. So I did that in my room in Cambridge when I was 20, before I met Alex, and I saw the secret writing washing all over surfaces. And what the secret writing meant to me was that this was the language of creative expression. This is how we express ourselves, through symbols. And these are just like representative symbols of those. But we all have our own secret writing, and we, we, we express ourselves in these ineffable ways. So in any way, um, Alex recognized the secret writing. It's been in my work ever since, and it represents for me the first opening that I had that God existed. But I was, what I was seeing in that room, not the writing itself, but what was speaking to me through the writing was God contact was the connectedness of all beings and things. Everything was one thing. And that was the beginning of my, you know, going from being an agnostic, kind of politico agnostic, to being like a full blown, you know, believer and mystic and, you know, not even a believer because it's a leap of faith. It's not belief, it's it's natural knowing. You know, it's like nobody can tell you that you didn't have that experience. So anyway, that's what the secret writing represents in my work. And I mean, I got, we all get messages about, you know, from from our psychedelic and, and cannabis experiences. But here, what are we looking at here, Alex? Yeah, and uh, we'll get to more of your work a little later, actually, too. Uh, this is just uh, to complete the cannabis cup reference points. There's a bunch of cannabinoids, the molecules there that form the uh, cannabis um, plant and the, form the psychoactive elements. So, uh, advance. There's Raphael McCullum, and he's the guy that discovered the cannabinoid system and THC and all the uh, cannabinoids. He discovered uh, over 420 of them. And, uh, so, uh, he discovered them in, uh, at Hebrew University. Now, this is us at the Cannabis Cup in 1995. Five, 1995. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, when Alex did the Kanavia image and we painted Jodea, a pageant uh, leader, to, and we made that little, I made that thong, we made her, we made her headdress. And we painted That's, her yeah, in yeah, Amsterdam, where you could yeah. have a cannabis cup Woo! in 1995. So let's advance forward. Okay. Yeah. That's this when this is when Alex did the poster of the cannabis cup in 2004. And that was the next cannabis cup. You suggested that I make a cannabis god to go with the goddess. Yeah. Uh, so this was my cannabacus. Yeah. So. Advance. This is the dance of Canabia. Yes, may she, may she uplift you. Uh, next. Yes, this is the can of fist. This is uh, for the Jeff Sessions America. We shall yes. overcome, my friends. You already in California are showing us the way. So listen, listen, this is the big campaign. This is now available. Be a part of this and um, help build a temple. It's a, it's, it's a new, brand new uh, print edition. I wanted you to be aware of in case you're interested. But it's a beautiful little thing. That's nice. Okay, so of course, it's the 75th anniversary of the bicycle ride. And, and uh, so I made this painting just recently called Albert Hoffman and the new ale uses, so I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Let's see, next. Um, so this is the whole painting, it's the whole LSD molecule, and you can see it's a big portrait of Albert Hoffman, and above him uh, there's a crown and a sun, 
So it's kind of like about the dawn of sacramental culture or the rebirth of sacramental culture. So uh, next. So here you see the doctor and he's surrounded by a lot of the uh, scientists that are making great work today and helping us to revision how psychedelics work in the brain. And uh, there's Rick Doblin is in one of those little pockets and uh, Amanda Fielding is helping us to, uh, with brain imagery that's uh, really quite interesting. And uh, let's see, is there another view even closer there? Uh, next. Yes, now you can see the bicyclist probably as the necktie and uh, if you hadn't seen it before. So this is Happy Bicycle Day and, uh, and I thought those are kind of like wings. See his, his, uh, his, his uh, uh, collars to either side. So, so here's Timothy Leary, he's part of the, uh, kind of the acid messiah there. There's Turn. the Be Here Now book right up there yeah. in the upper corner. And a uh, little bit of uh, Hendrix next. And uh, Terrence, brother Terrence shows up. And Dennis, Paul, next. So down at the bottom we've got the whole story of the Greek uh, Eleusinian mysteries, which were all about the mysteries of agriculture, Demeter and Persephone, and how Persephone was abducted and stayed underground for half the year and then burst out in the spring. So she was the divine feminine, bursting forth, flowering, uh, bringing beauty back to the landscape. And so it was a religion that celebrated that rebirth. This was Socrates and a number of the uh, Greek philosophers all drank the kaikion, a psychedelic brew, and that allowed them access to the visionary realms, the realm of the ideal. Next. So over here we've got the shamanic uh, story unfolding. So Maria Sabina gave the mushroom to Gordon Wasson and Gordon Wasson gave it to Albert Hoffman. He distilled the psychoactive principle as psilocybin in 1958, and uh, next, uh, then in 1962, Walter Pankey did the Good Friday experiment at uh, Marsh Chapel in uh, Boston University, and it proved that 65% of the time, people who take psilocybin, in a, who are spiritually inclined in a good set and setting, will meet the divine, they will have a mystical experience. And this was proven again by Roland Griffiths in his uh, Johns Hopkins studies. So, I'm not sure we can read that. We're not gonna read this tonight. This is on the bottom of the uh, new uh, poster of uh, Dr. Hoffman and the New Eleusis, which is just coming out. And it, it's like a prayer. It tells you what Dr. Hoffman feels what his vision is for the psychedelic substances and our culture. And I, and, I, and I wish you a very, very happy Bicycle Day and uh, Cannabis Day. So, so Alex thought we should include just a little bit more about our story, our journey. And so we're just, what do we have first, Alex? What goes? Ah, they see there's the secret writing, how it first started, and it, it's hard to see it here, but it, it appeared as very obsessive, compulsive little ink writing and filling pages uh, with this writing. And I then to print it, I had to, uh, you know, develop 20 letters out of all the infinite letters that there could be. So this is the way the writing was in 1976, and uh, you'll see some of it in my work even today. Okay. This is my show, my master's thesis show at Tufts University. Keep going. I did, uh, you know, performance installations. Okay. <laughs> Alex and I met in a class called Conceptual Mixed Media, and we still are doing Conceptual Mixed Media. There's Alex. Yeah, so this was my first LSD trip. I was in a tunnel in the dark, going toward the light, and the light was God, and it was all on a trip in Allison's living room, uh, and uh, 
it was when I was 21, and really, I fell in love with Allison right, right there and then, and we've been together ever since. So it was my rebirth, really, actually. And uh, so it, it definitely brought us together. Cosmic glue. All right, next. Onwards. So it, it also gave us the vision of the sacred mirrors, really, or the um, something that was at the heart of that, uh, which Allison inspired and named. This is the psychic energy system, and it shows the subtle body uh, in uh, relationship with the physical body. Next, the next. I, I want to just stop one second and just say that Alex and I you know, met and we were performance artists together. And the Sacred Mirrors really came out of this desire that Alex had to create a, an environment of, you know, that reflected on the body, mind, and spirit of a, of a human individual and allow people to stand in front of those images, letting them be life-size paintings and stand in front of them and reflect on those inner systems or maybe those ephemeral, you know, invisible systems. You know, they could, like, they could focus on them and see if they could imagine them and have it be a healing experience, have it be like a kind of like a, like a battery where you, you look at it and the energy comes back to you. So the 21 sacred mirrors uh, uh, was something that, um, that I recommended and Alex did and we, we worked on the frames together and uh, it's what you, we wanted to build the chapel about to share this environment of visionary art. So anyway, keep going. Next. This was the universal mind lattice and this is the uh, sen at the center of the sacred mirrors but it was a experience that we had on June 3rd, 1976, when we melted down, it seemed like, from our physical bodies on a, a, a large dose of LSD, and we became fountains and drains of light, and uh, interconnected with a, uh, a network of souls that was infinite so this is where i think we really live you know it's beyond gender it's beyond time and uh this timeless spirit comes down and visits uh in different dimensions different beings so uh anyway this is uh, at the core of the sacred mirrors and so uh, well, this, was our, this was our first shared uh, psychedelic, you know, like we were both in the same, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, and so we, it really changed our work and changed the direction of our work to want to portray that experience. That was where we just, we just sort of headed towards, was portraying that experience of, of interconnected light. And this was the work that I began to do, it was really more like looking down the big whole of the in, in universal mind lattice. Next slide. Next slide. And then the vast vista of fountains and drains of energy that you that you experience in the uh, bliss realm. Next. All my work is made of systems and it's made of particles and it's made of waves and it's made of uh, you know, this, this, this unit, this 100 square unit, uh, which is the spectrum. Keep going. And this is also, all of them are 100 square units, it's chaos. Chaos is order plus entropy. All order is falling apart in the material world. So that's my symbol for the material world. Keep going. And this is other work where I combine chaos, order, and secret writing. Keep going. Next. Chaos, chaos, order, chaos, secret writing. That's what I learned from LSD. It told me that I could just continue to portray chaos, order, and secret writing in, in, for the rest of my life, and that would be an essentialized worldview that could become my signature. And that's what it is. 
And so if you ever see this, if you forget about me in 20 years, but you see something like this in New Zealand, you'll say, oh my God, I remember it. I saw that before. See, that's what I want to do. I want you to remember that. Chaos, order, and secret writing. It's art. It's conceptual and it's mixed media. Well, there you, go. you know, we had our second simultaneous uh, mystical experience when we had a vision of the chapel on our first MDMA experience. It was in 1985, and so I painted a, uh, it, it was a vision of the chapel that has really sort of guided us. And uh, at any rate, I painted this portrait of Dr. Uh, Alexander Shulgin and uh, Anne Shulgin, and they're cradling the MDMA molecule because it was MDMA that uh, led us to that vision. And it was his uh, great contribution back into the uh, entheogenic memes. And uh, Well, this was our second simultaneous vision. It happened in 1985 when we both saw the chapel. It was our first MDMA experience. It was legal in 1985. And we were just lying on our bed in our bedroom and we took a dose of this. And we both had the same vision of, the, of like we had to build a chapel. So then to we hold the sacred mirrors. The so, sacred mirror for the sacred mirrors. Yes, exactly. next. So we built one. Uh, the we first built one in the city. In the it was a. It was there for five years. Two thousand four to two thousand nine. And, and, yes. and, and, and yes. it was. A, and it was a twelve thousand square foot uh, center of visionary art and music and dance. And this is the sacred mirrors room. It was one of the rooms in the hall. And that's a that's a photograph by Dean Chamberlain an L.A. photographer that we love. And there's Dr. Hoffman looking at our Cosm book and looking at that very page where we were in the chapel, you see? We got a picture of Dr. Hoffman looking at our Cosm book. And Entheon, the sanctuary of visionary art at Cosm. That's what we're building. We're closer than we've ever been to that vision of, of having a temple. An, an enduring sanctuary of visionary art. That's our mission, is to build an enduring sanctuary. This is the visual conceptualization that Alex and Ryan Tottle worked on for years. And Ryan Tottle is an LA artist. He's a Disney artist. Anyway, they worked on the rendering Alex's drawing. This is creating a better world. This is the uh, bronze doors that Alex designed and drew and, and, and we had them sculpted and made. They're, they're, they're being worked on in Thailand right now. There they are. And, and you can actually have a beautiful plaque, a bronze plaque of this door. People uh, do have that as a, as a level of support for Cosm. It's a beautiful sculpture nice. by Alex. And there's a side view nice. showing the many faces wrapping the building. There's the corner angels. You could be you could be the supporter of the of a corner angel in your name. So that's the way the sculptures are going to go onto the building. And by the way, the sculptures are absolutely doable. You can do 3D printout uh, 20 feet high by 8 feet by 8 feet at this point in the technology. And so you can have the foam printed. You make a mold and then you, you cast it. So it's just like any other architectural, um, monumental, uh, concrete modeling and casting. So they have them everywhere. But anyway, this is, shows all the world religions. 30 world religions will be symbol, symbolically represented. And there's the steeple looking up the rooftop. The steeple we've been visioning into being for many years, and we have a little steeple head that you can buy online to help us vision it into being. Actually, you can put it on your altar. Yeah, but anyway, there is the steeple head, and we manifested it. It's nine feet tall. Next. It was made in Bali. We, we brought it in through Burning Man. David Bronner made sure that it was uh, gracing the entryway of the foam dome. Yes, last year at Burning Man. And then it made it home to Cosm. And we had a big ceremony last summer, to, you know, September or something, after Burning Man when he came home. 
and uh, it is not on top of the building yet. We were we are waiting till we get a certificate of occupancy, yes. and we will crown the building with the steeple head, which is unra under wraps right now. But it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Next. What's this? This is the All One Gallery. Oh yeah, this is the All One Gallery. There's David Bronner up there in the corner. We named it after the All One or None logo of the David Bronner, of the Dr. Bronner soap. They gave us a quarter of a million dollars to help us. It was their largest donor so far. And uh, and David is a, is a tremendous friend. So anyway, another LA person. That's the chapel of Sacred Mirror's room. Here we are on the left waiting for the roof to go on. We had to take the roof off anyway. So we, we raised the roof and look at what we did. We put these arches in and it's being painted gold and red. It's where the Sacred Mirrors are going to go. Keep going. And this is the center campus side. There's one side that's two stories and it will have those two soul birds that were also funded. And so let's see the soul birds, Alex. There they are, nine foot soul birds. We're gonna have the guardians of, now you can also be, a, you know, at a level of support, you can have a soul bird on your altar, a golden little soul bird. We print them out ourselves in our studio. Keep going. And the Entheon, another level of support. I have to tell you that Alex designed this when my parents died like four or five years ago. And uh, it is for your ashes or your stashes. And your stashes. First your stashes, then your ashes. It's a beautiful sculpture by Alex. This is the uh, the Cosmos Grail. There are 50 Grail holders. It's a level of support. It's lined in silver, so you can actually drink your elixirs out of it. And in the Cosm Journal, you can get involved and have a page in the Cosm Journal. You can have an ad. You can tell everybody about your, your, your residence with Cosm. And it helps to support. The new Cosm Journal coming out is the great number 10 volume. It'll be on love. We have each one has a theme. The one that's already out is divinity. And there's some Cosm Journals you can just download for free online. They're, they're the first you know, few are already downloadable. So anyway, Cosm Journal, find out about that. The greatest visionary artists, the greatest you know, visionary writers, and, and, and on every theme, it's brilliant. You know who's in the love volume? Alma, the hugging guru. She wrote something for our Cosm Journal. Honestly, anyway, this is the temple we're going to build. In our meadow, after Entheon, we're gonna move all our art out of Entheon and move it into this temple and leave Entheon for all the visionary artists. It'll be a visionary art museum, but we'll start with the all one gallery, the, 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 the gallery of the international visionary art movement, the biggest gallery in the front as you enter will be all of our friends, our great visionary art friends. So thank you, friends. Yeah, many of you thank you, are Alex. here tonight. Oh, thank you, Allison. Thank you so much. You know, uh, I don't know whether we have time to see the little movie thing. Oh, let's see it. Yeah. Can we turn, turn that possible? right on? I have a feeling the sound isn't going to work, exactly. but you can, you can go online and see it with the wonderful yeah. sound. Yeah. And we'll but annotate uh, as we see it. Full screen if you can. Full screen. Yeah. It, full screen it, baby. Full screen. There we go.
so much for being here tonight. Just Woo! by coming, you are temple builders with us. We invite you to come to New York and come up the Hudson River, the Power of Hudson, the Mighty Hudson, the Moon River. Come on up and see us and play with us at full moons, equinoxes, solstices. It's, it's us, it's us guys, it's family up there in the Hudson River. We love Thanks you. Thanks so much everyone. And thank you to all the artists here tonight. And thank you to all the electronic musicians, all of our friends. Awesome. Have a great night. We're going to be live here. We'll see you later.